thing we want to, it's not on the regular agenda, but Mrs. Vance has written this in, we would like to recognize the rising stars. And I believe there are some students here, Mr. Strasser, and their parents in attendance. Yes, we had uh, four students recognized by the Indiana, Indiana Association of School Principals as uh, rising stars of 2017. Uh, those are juniors that are recognized throughout the state, and they're recognized solely on their academic uh, scores and academic ability at how they've done so far through high school. Uh, so the four that were um, from Rochester High School is Evan Cashin. You can stand up. Here. Okay. Could you have their parents stand up too, please? Could their parents stand up too, please, if they're sure. present? Emma Dahlquist and Thomas Rohr. And any former teachers of theirs? Disregard <laughs> uh, what it, <laughs> what I think is awesome about uh, all four of these kids is this award is based solely on academics, but these are all extremely well-rounded students that participate in a multitude of things. There's not um, a sport or a club or an organization that we have that one of these four is not a major contributor in. So aside from focusing on academics and excelling in that area, they have also chosen to excel in theater and athletics and a multitude of other organizations. So I appreciate everything that they're giving back to Rochester High School because kids like this are what make our school a great place. Thank you for representing us so well. Thank you. Your turn. <laughs> and I think, Tom, in the past, you always said if they wanted to leave, they're welcome to stay. <laughs> they're welcome to stay, but these meetings can go a little longer. So if you would like to leave, you're certainly more than welcome to. We'd love to have you if you'd like to watch us go through. <laughs> Next on the agenda are consent items. Minutes from the December 19th regular board meeting. And this is my first meeting, so I'm going to ask Tom for all the help I can get because I know I will take this big old foot and stick it right in my mouth somehow. So where do we go from here? We just read through all the each meeting and if there's any additions or corrections. We'll get them all at once. Yeah, just read, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Once. read through all that? Or just read the date. Yeah, okay. Each, uh, By title. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I got them. Okay. Uh, the consent items are the minutes of the December 19, 2016 regular board meeting, certification of December 20, 2016 <laughs> executive session. Certification, certification of January 2nd, 2017 executive session. Minutes of the January 2nd, 2017 public hearing. Minutes of the January 10th, 2017 organizational board meeting. Minutes of the January 10th, 2017 board of finance meeting. And minutes of the January 10th, 2017 study session. Are there any additions or corrections or comment? Um, we should correct our certification of the December 20th, 2016 executive session by adding Binyi Wong as a participant and Gail Armstrong. Mm -hmm. And striking Mark Norris and adding Tyler Dennison. Deniston or Deniston? Deniston. Any other additions, corrections? <coughs> Case will entertain motions to approve the minutes as read. So moved. Second that. Motion made by Sandy, seconded by Steve. All in favor of approving the minutes, raise your right hand. Opposed, motion carries 7-0. Next, we move on to the financial report. So, uh, tonight we have um, claims that total um, $3,495,192 in one set. Their claims docket numbers um, 10,633 to 10,822. Would you like me to go through all of these items at once to approve at the end, or are we doing each item number one? In the interest of time, okay. I'm going to let you use your best discretion on that. Okay. Um, payrolls, 
and had three payrolls from December 23rd all the way through uh, January 20th, so that captures half of December and all of January um, um, are on there as well. Um, de the December 23rd, 2016 payroll was 501881 and 68 cents. Um, the January 6th payroll was 357, $357,149.27, and then the January 20th was $356,504.77. Moving on to the <coughs> district and high school outstanding checks to be voided. So what this process is, on a yearly basis, we um, go through our checks and any list out and provide um, a report to the board, all the checks that are over two years old, and then ask them to be um, canceled out. And then from there, we recoup the funds back into the um, the ones in which that they were written from. So at this point, um, only the high school and the corporation office had checks that were two years and older, and that those reports have been provided as well. Um, the corporation had two banks worth of checks. One was the operating, and then the other one was the payroll. Um, those, the operating account totaled four hundred and twenty-four dollars and fifty cents, and then the payroll account totaled four hundred and forty-four dollars and three cents. High school um, has a listing there as well. Do you want to click on the writing? And that listing, Scott's going to shoot on there. Just a few, one, two, three, four, five, six, a total of six. So um, we're asking that the board approve uh, these items. Moving on to the funds report. General fund started December with $414,682.94, had $1,111,011.73 worth of receipts. Expenses for the month were $949,914.68, leaving an ending balance of $575,779.99. Any questions on general fund? Nope. Anyone, anything from the public? Moving on to debt service fund, we started with $1,869,588.97. We had $1,525,400.81 worth of receipts. Uh, again, in December, we receive our tax levies. Um, so that's where a lot of that came from. Our month to date expenses, which re represent our um, bonds that we um, are obligated to pay. Uh, they, that total for December is the amount of $1,552,697.82, leading an ending balance of $1,842,291.96 for debt service fund. Any questions on the debt service fund? Temple Projects Fund started with $298,284.33. We had $663,402.73 worth of receipts. Expenses for the month totaled $141,549.55, leaving an ending balance of $820,137.51. Any questions with capital projects? Through. Transportation fund started with a balance of $862,229.81. We received $330,638.50. We had $71,360.27 worth of expenditures for the month, leaving an ending balance of $1,121,508.04. Bus replacement fund, we started with $350,752.63. We received $85,053.03 from taxes to the fund. We had uh, expenses that totaled $197,841.56 because the buses finally came. And leaves us with an ending balance of $237,964.10. Any questions on any of those funds that are just followed? And then after the funds report, we have the allowance of the year, allowance of end of the year transfers. 
So what that allows us to do, and when I say us, I mean Julie and I, because we're a team in the office. Um, through the year-end process, uh, there's hundreds of budget lines in each of the five funds. And through the year-end process, some of them run negative, which means they're overexpended, and then some of them still have funds. So through a clearing up formality process um, that our software does for us is to take the ones that are overexpended, um, I'm sorry, take the ones that, the account lines that have money and apply it to the ones that are overexpended. So um, that is, I have it broken out, um, and Scott has it up on the board by funds. Interfund transfers mean that, I mean that those transfers happen within the program. So a program is the thousand, uh, the ten thousand to the nineteen ninety nine. So um, within interfund transfers, um, we have to report separately, and there's the totals for each fund. Um, it's merely pro appropriations. Um, and I don't want to say merely, but that's our budget. That's you know what we advertise out. This is you know pretty much the cleaning up of. Um, of our 2017 budget, I'm sorry, 2016 budget, I'm getting ahead of myself. Our 2016 budget is wrapped up with as far as appropriations go. Um, and it's just a, a cleaning up piece that's happened from there. Intra fund transfers are when um, we overexpend in the program, and this column is <coughs> on the right. So if we overexpend on the program, and as you, as you notice, it goes from 10,000 to 39,000. 999, um, and that's through a whole cleaning up process. The interfund transfers on the right are what we're going to report for the auditor for transparency purposes, um, because our budget was is advertised. Um, it's very taxpayer transparent, um, and then we're got just a formality piece. We're going to um, report. We're uh, we obligated per state statute to report the interfund transfers to the um, county auditor on a yearly. So the, like I said, this is a formality piece um, upon board approval. Um, with Julie and I have documents that just need signed and we'll get them on file from there. So for like the intra, intra fund transfer, that's a million dollars. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That means that there was a million dollar or a million dollars worth of appropriations that were spent not in the right area. Um, when I came in in 2016, the budget was already set and. Um, and approved, um, and then, however, I found once I took over operations that, uh, for instance, our kindergarten uh, program <coughs> did, not, did not have any appropriations assigned to it. So it's, it's gonna, this is, you know, my anticipation is that this is the first year of the cleanup. Um, we, through the 2017 budget that has been advertised and approved, there's appropriations in that kindergarten area. So it's it's mainly a transparency piece of clearance. Are there any other questions or comments? So this would be the biggest cleanup <clears throat> here on, it'll be small numbers. Exactly, exactly. <clears throat> and then uh, finance report number six, resolution of the Young litigation, Mr. Wagner. Yes, uh, several Months ago, um, March of 2016, the school corporation got sued by an employee, Teresa Young, uh, found it to be in the benefit of the school corporation, and Ms. Young and her attorney found it to be in their mutual interest to settle this litigation uh, with neither side admitting guilt or responsibility. The school corporation will pay $1,700 uh, to Ms. Young as a part of this settlement. Uh, it does require board approval, and because it's a personnel matter, the matters are generally confidential. The, the uh, uh, settlement agreement is uh, labeled a confidential settlement agreement and will be placed in her personnel file if the board approves. Further questions or comments on any of the financial report items? In that case, do I have a motion to approve the financial report items one through six? Moved. Motion by Jenny. Second. You and Rick, so. Second by Tom. Those in favor of approving financial report, raise your right hand, please. 
motion carries seven zero moving on to state student and stakeholder focus and under that we have donations <coughs> I, have them. I have them here I'll use your so not to pull them up on the iPad uh, number one Alyssa Campbell and friends items to the RMS staff students school supplies Kleenex hygiene items and underwear item number two is Alyssa Campbell and friends Columbia School Markers, crayons, pencils, glue, sticks, earbuds, sticky notes, Play-Doh, ch sidewalk chalk, underwear, socks, and too many other things to list. <laughs> Number three, Rochester Glass. They donated for the Rochester Glass Holiday Classic Tournament for hospitality and expenses for the attorney, $650. The Optimist Club donated to girls soccer, $380. Zebra Pride Running Club to the RHS swim team, $350. The Zebra Pride Running Club to the RHS cross country team, $350. Zebra Pride Running Club to the RHS track team, $350. Rochester Running Club Triathlon gave RMS track team $350. Rochester Running Club Triathlon gave $350 to the RMS cross country team. The Optimist Club gave Columbia first grade slash Honeywell $625. Columbia PTO gave Columbia First Grade slash Honeywell $250. And the Awana Club from the First Baptist Church donated school supplies. There's Any, one there's an added. There's an added? That's on my brand. Oh, Misty Christ <coughs> gave the Rochester Middle School National Junior Honor, Honor Society store four large bags of gumball with a value of $10. Any comments or questions on the donations? Okay, so I'll entertain motions to approve the donations. Hello. Jenny, Sandy, Sandy move. Seconded by Stacy. All in favor? Raise your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. Uh, moving on to information and analysis, we have third readings of various policies. Jenny, I'll turn that over to you. We have two policies that have um, been read twice, and so this is their third and final reading. Uh, policy 8390 involves animals at school, both um, service animals and any animals that may be at school. Policy 9700.01 is advertising, sponsorship, naming rights. And those have both been posted on the website for um, several weeks. It even has the number of downloads, so we're in the high 70s on some of those. So. Somebody's looking at them, which is great. Um, I don't recommend any changes beyond what we have already seen on those. So, we're presented to be adopted now. So, we've had the first and second reading. Now, we would just take a motion for the third and final reading to adopt the policies? Yeah, you adopt the policies. I will entertain any motion to adopt the third reading of those policies. So it, well, before we do that, I'm sorry. Okay. Any questions, comments, <coughs> public input? Okay. Sandy, move we adopt the policies. I second that. Second by Steve. All in favor of adopting the policies, raise your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. Moving to part F faculty and staff focus, a personnel report. On that, we have. Hiring Terry Randall for Columbia Knight Building Tech, Leah Sutton for the High School Food Service Assistant, Margaret Bryant for the Columbia Food Service Assistant, Alicia Fuller for Riddle Special Needs Instructional Assistant, Katie Wallace from Columbia or for Columbia Special Needs Instructional Assistant, and Hope Weaver, Columbia Half Day Special Needs Instructional Assistant Life Skills Class. Reassignment, Mark Clark from Columbia Knight Building Tech to High School Building Tech. Family Medical Leave, Ann Beeler, High School Head Secretary from December 26th to Undetermined. Victoria Zellers, High School Nurse from December 27th, approximately six to eight weeks. Jamie Bach, High School ECA Treasurer, extended to February 13th, 2017. Wendy Scobie, Technology Assistant, December 16th, and that's six to eight weeks approximately. Ryan Stockberger, groundskeeper from January 31st, 2017 to approximately May 1st, 2017. 
Diana McGriff, a food service assistant, approximate dates January 9th through March 2nd of 2017. For maternity leave, Kelly Scheidler from March 24th, 2017 to December 19th, 2017. Kayla Seacrest, March 16th, 2017 to the end of 2017 school year. Did I read that correctly? System. Mm -hmm. 2017. Resignations, Linda Jung, Bus driver effective February 2nd, 2017, and Michael Rohr, bus driver, head bus driver, effective January 20, effective January 26, 2017. And for winter intercession, Deb Wolford for high school math and Felix Amandi for high school English. Any comments, additions, or deletions? In that case, I'll take motions to accept the personnel or the personnel report on the faculty and staff focus. So moved. Moved by Jenny, second by Stacy. All in favor of approving the staff? Motion carries 7 0. <coughs> Overnight field trips. We have five of them. Well, if I may know, yes, the last two field trips aren't overnight field trips. They are just out of state field trips. Uh, but nice. whenever we take students across <coughs> state lines, we do ask and seek board approval. And some of these, I believe, some of the representatives are here and can speak about if you'd like for them to with Clint's request for the wrestling team overnight field trip. I don't know if you want to share anything in regards to <coughs> It's a pretty standard trip. You go down as a team and... 17 years, right? <laughs> so the approval of the wrestling team overnight field trip to the IHSA State Wrestling Tournament will be the first. Uh, approval of the FCCLA Con Leadership Conference in Muncie, Indiana. Is there a representative here for that? This no? is a... Pr go ahead, Em. The approval of the senior trip to Chicago, Illinois. The approval of the high school zoology class field trip to Shedd Aquarium, and that's not an overnight trip, correct? That is it's not. Just out the, of state. the last two are just out of state. Uh, one <coughs> field trip request from the high school. And then approval of the high school chemistry two class field trip to New Cook Nuclear Plant in Bridgman, Michigan. I guess I should add if there were any representatives that wanted to speak on behalf of their field trips. I can speak on this. Are there any questions or comments that you'd like to ask Mr. Strasser? This is the second year, Adam, for the senior trip to Chicago. Correct. Um, or is this the third year? This is the third, the third year. Third year. Okay. And the last two years they've, they've done this and it ends with uh, them, if they wish, to go through performance at the second city, which gets over at like very late in the morning so when they've been coming back tonight they're getting back in, a, in the early morning hours so they thought they did an overnight trip this year uh, then they could take the next day and the kids could see more things while they're there. In that case is there a motion to approve the five field trips as given? Moved. Sandy moved by Sandy. Second. Second by Tom. All in favor of approving the field trips raise your right hand. Motion carries 7-0. If I may, Clint, do you mind wrapping up your wrestling for us? And I believe that we have a young lady who qualified for the state. Is that correct? Uh, Riley Schaefer? Yes. Yeah, she was, um, uh, well, I'm trying to remember my weekends are starting to gel together. <laughs> two weeks ago, two Fridays ago, uh, she was part of the inaugural uh, state championship for girls. Um, it's something that the IHSA is trying to get started. Um, they're looking for a 20th sport, and girls wrestling is something they're really looking hard at because it's really gotten popular in Indiana. So she, uh, two weeks before that, she was a uh, runner-up in our regional and then had qualified her for the state tournament, and um, she was the first 220-pound uh, state champion in Indiana history. So, Congratulations. That's you. awesome. In that case, publicly congratulations, Riley Schaefer. That's a neat honor and historical. I know you were pretty proud of that, and I was for you. So, Moving on to other business, superintendent business. Um, just first of all, I want to thank the teachers for the opportunity and administrators for our finance 102. We just concluded that a 
was that two weeks ago with the corporation goal of by June to reach 900,000 in our general fund and we're starting to see that grow and improve with tonight's recording of it being $575,779. So thank you for that time and effort. I think the, the better informed everybody is, the better chance we have of meeting those goals collectively. And then want to thank the, the board for the opportunity to attend meetings in Capitol Hill and Washington. I had the unique opportunity to sit down with Senator Donnelly and Senator Young and one of um, Senator Walorski's representatives, and it was really a great conversation, I felt, to be able to take what we've been working on locally, see that at the state level, and then be able to express um, the thank yous and the concerns um, at Capitol Hill. Our focus was both on ESSA and the funding that goes behind that Every Student Succeed Act and making sure that they understand how that impacts schools, especially around Title IV, which we talked about, and I haven't quite had the chance to talk to the administrative team about that. And, and things that they're seeing, but also with um, other, just being able to represent rural schools in that environment and help them be able to see uh, the, how the decisions that they make there impact us here and within the state of Indiana. So those were phenomenal conversations and I learned a lot about how to represent schools, how to have those conversations, and so really appreciate that. And I think we're seeing some good things unfold within the state of Indiana around those conversations that have been happening. And then a final thank you to Jason and Adam and the teachers in those buildings around construction. I don't know if you gentlemen are comfortable giving brief rundowns. I think things are still going okay. We just had those construction updates and still getting good reviews around that. Um, our construction is going great. We have water fountains that work uh, in the whole building. Uh, we just got, uh, they just finished putting new um, things in all the bathrooms. And we just moved on today. They just started work in a new set of classrooms. So Mr. Gard got to move out of his classroom for a couple of weeks uh, today. But things uh, things are going really quickly, and they're doing a very nice job. And they're really great people to work with. I'll stand up so I don't get reprimanded early on. <laughs> <laughs> our our construction's going uh, great. Uh, we are getting ready to uh, start on to the second grade wing. We've gotten the entire first grade wing complete. I can tell you that uh, I notice a huge change in the uh, atmosphere in those rooms that have already been completed. I sat in and did an observation the other day for a teacher who has the old system and I had to get up and move when the heaters kicked on because they're so loud. And when you're in one of the rooms that the new thing, the, the new systems are, have been installed, uh, they're amazingly quiet, airflow is good. Teachers uh, have a little bit of uh, adjustment on their, uh, their thermostat so they can make it comfortable for the kids. Uh, the, the crews down there have been uh, super uh, professional, uh, very um, safety oriented, uh, always looking after the kids. And I, I talk to them every morning. They're in my office first thing every morning, let me know what they're doing, what they need, uh, and they're doing, they're doing a great job. So. Um, Paradise is, uh, it's still paradise. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's the warmest place in the, uh, in, in the Columbia area. And uh, the, uh, the teachers have been fantastic in their flexibility and going out there, uh, providing a good environment for the kids. And, and I can't thank them enough for, for their flexibility because it's not easy to just pick up in the middle of the year and move your, move your kids out for two to three weeks. But, but they've done a fantastic job. So uh, we're, we're well on our way, getting ready to do a move tomorrow, finishing up two more rooms. and. Uh, the, uh, the crews have also worked really hard over our breaks. Uh, they've been very flexible in uh, trying to do work uh, in areas that uh, have a, a bigger impact of sending kids out uh, to paradise and, and things like that. And uh, that's been very helpful for us and for our students. So, And also thank you to our maintenance staff and custodial yeah. crew because that puts a lot on them as well. And they've been doing a phenomenal job in supporting the teachers. Any questions, comments, questions, <coughs> deletions from Mrs. Vance? I think that's all I have. This is the point in the meeting where we generally would like to have public comments, concerns, critiques, compliments. If you would like to speak on a matter, feel free to do so now. Hi. Mrs. Shane? Yes, I'm Lori Shane, teacher at the middle school, and I just have a general comment to make. Um, one comment you often hear in the hallways at Rochester is that we are a family. There is a sense of pride in the idea that we support one another in the goal to make our schools the best they can be. 
Due to recent events, that feeling has come into question. As members of the corporation, we need to hold each other to a standard of respect for one another. It is important to remember that social media is not a one-on-one -on -one conversation, rather a conversation with the public. We as members should refrain from participating in criticizing each other and allowing others to criticize fellow colleagues. <coughs> Anyone else? I'd just like to comment on the, um, the donations that we got. Uh, you saw how, how large of a list that was. And you know, uh, our community does a fantastic job of supporting us. And you know, the, the things that they give to us, uh, they go right into the, to the kids' hands. You, you saw a lot of the things that were you know, clothing and, and things like that. And, we just were blessed to get those donations to get that support uh, the Honeywell piece uh, just so you guys are aware uh, for those donations for first grade is going to give those students an opportunity uh, to go and, and, and see a performance of Biscuit a live performance at the Honeywell Center which is going to be a great opportunity for the, those first grade kids and that was uh, almost 750 maybe 800 dollars of donations and uh, we just couldn't do it without it. So uh, I just wanted to publicly recognize and thank the community again for, uh, for all of that support. As my first meeting, I made that mistake. We always usually do that. Thank you very much for all the donors who did sure. contribute. And back to you, Mr. Shane. I understand your concern. We all know how Facebook, and I agree with you, can sometimes take on a head of its own. Those things have been addressed. And I would also publicly, for the any parent out there who has a concern with a teacher or a Administrator, please go to that teacher first and follow that chain of command. If you have an issue with certain things, please go see them first, and then they will take it. If you don't get your satisfaction, you can meet with the teacher and the principal, and then on up the chain of command. So, <clears throat> any other public comments before we adjourn? In that case, comments, critiques, suggestions? I got the first one under your belt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure my wife will see this and tell me how I did everything wrong. <laughs> Good job. Take a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. Second. Okay. Motion by Steve, second by Sandy. All in favor of adjourning. And motion carries 7 0. Thank you, everybody, for coming out tonight. I can take this thing on the table. Oh, your iPad.